All right, Patreon. So, in YouTube in a month. We're going to talk about the... I, I know I've been a little slack, but yeah, I've had some work stuff going on. I've been pretty, pretty fucking busy the last, last couple weeks. We're going to talk about the original fighting folder today. The Cutthroat Razor. The Straight Razor. Now... These things have quite a few nuances, which I just about taught myself on the hard way just a second ago. Uh, so they're, they're not ideal, but they are out there. All right, you can get them. Now in my state, it is unlawful to carry one of these concealed, period, point blank, bottom line. However, that might not be the case in yours. And in certain areas, you might be able to get away with carrying one of these. So for the sake of nostalgia more than anything, we're gonna go over this today. What is a straight razor? Well, when you go back in time, uh, a knife was a fixed blade because there was no reliable locking mechanisms available. All right, um, you look, we don't see current pocket knives coming into existence until, well, I know for a fact about the Civil War time, maybe a little bit before, but these, type of things have been in existence for a while. All they are is they are two scales, and this one's pinned together, two pins, very simple. Little spacer back there, all right? You've got a, a hook tail on the end of a blade. Now, they weren't pointed because if you were using them for actually shaving, which I obviously don't have any much use for, all right? You don't want the point to cut you while you're shaving. But what you do have is a very, very, very thin cutting edge. Thin is good. Thin means sharp, all right? These things will cut you to the bone, all right? So they're extremely effective as a weapon within their limitations. Now, because they don't lock, you have to provide a biomechanical lock for them, which is good and bad. These are not brute force weapons. They are delicate weapons. You treat this like a surgeon's scalpel because if you go slamming into something, right, you're going to hurt yourself. So there's really two grips you can use this in, all right? Standard grip where the blade would be forward here and a reverse grip, all right? Now... This would be my preference, but but it's kind of hard to get into. Now you can use it here, and I'd imagine these were used along this line many, many times back in the day when these were actually common. All right, but notice the common trend. I've got a piece of my body keeping that blade from just simply moving back, okay? So how would I carry it? Well, you don't want that tail to rub a hole in your pocket, so I'd carry it this way and put my pointer finger in that loop, push it down, and flip it back. That will probably be there for your quickest deployment, okay? You do wanna make sure you get your finger low enough so it doesn't get in the way, all right? And these are not gonna be quick to deploy. Notice I have to roll my hand here, there. All right, this is not a replacement for the modern fighting boulder, okay? Flick back and roll my hand. Flick back, and I just caught myself on the tail there. All right, one more time. Flick back, roll it over. My thumb goes into that groove, and this is balanced against this knuckle of this finger. And I would set this on what I wanted to cut and drive, drive it across and let that angle carry that blade in to the target material. So what if I did want to carry it this way? Same thing, pinky finger, push down, roll back. All right, and then if you want to go the other way, you can flip it around, all right? And there is, of course, the option of putting this on a belt, right? knocking it back here that is an option all right is this something that i would carry maybe have i carried them no comment it's not legal in my state so no comment take from that what you will so with the straight razor right you've got a couple of things to keep in mind you cannot thrust with it what you can do is put the blade in and roll to get that penetration i put the blade on what i want to cut and I'm gonna roll it back. Notice how as I roll my hand, it's pulling that cutting edge in, all right? And that's gonna allow this cut, 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 cut. It's gonna be sitting flat, right? Cut, 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 okay? So don't knock them just because they don't lock. They're not a modern folder by any means, 
but they are there. They are effective. Now, why are these called a, a cutthroat razor? Well, because if you're shaving with them, what does it look like you're doing? There's a lesson there. Now you can, you, I wouldn't use this for fighting, but for, shall we say, proactive work, right? When I open this up, I put my middle finger here and my trigger finger here. Now we can use it a little more like we would a normal knife. Sentry removal, right? I'm nowhere near me, by the way. I've got about four or five inches between me and this thing. Head comes up, place on, push through. Yeah, that still works. Notice the grip though, all right? This blade will want to go back when it meets any resistance. So I've got my thumb up here, like I would with a Filipino knife grip. My middle finger is stopping that tail. And you can put your pointer finger, I kind of like it down there, but this is not something that I would really want to fight with. But you have to understand, these things were made illegal for a reason, because people were fighting with them. All right, uh, a knife fight's bad enough. A razor fight is something I just don't want any part of. All right, so can't all your normal angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, still work. Your thrusts do not, right? One, two, all of these lines that we have discussed in previous videos, which I'll do another video updating that, still works. Well, what if you go ahead and roll it all the way around? All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. They all still work. What about that reverse grip? Okay, what about it? One, two, this gets hokey. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. What if you have it laid across the back? One, now you might wanna roll it up. Two, notice the stop, right? Two, three, roll it, four. Can't really go here, right? Maybe you can go, you can obviously go five, roll it, six, seven, eight. All of your angles still work. You just have to play with the grip a little bit, right? So how do we do that? What about a grip transition, right? You've got your previously discussed forward grip edge out. Can you go forward grip edge in? Sure, right there. But you have to understand you're gonna have some play. So how do you deal with that? You want your fingers here and your thumb here, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still works, all right? We just showed this one. Forward grip or reverse grip, edge out. We just showed that one. Reverse grip, edge in. One, two, flip it, three, flip it, four, five, flip it, six, seven, flip it. Now, can you flip these? Oh yeah, they flip very, very well. This one's not as smooth as some of them. This is where the bone handle started to become a clue, right? Because the wood handles don't slip as easily in your hand, right? But there's your straight razor. Very simple, very effective tool. And the thing of it is, you can get decent ones of these very, very cheap. All right, I think this one was like 12 bucks or something like that. It doesn't have to be super high quality, all right? Because you're not shaving your face with it, right? So now we run into some of the other problems with the straight razor, right? Obviously, what's its advantage? It's thin, all right? It's not very big. Well, I mean, it's got a big blade, but... It's not a very big package. I mean, put it this way. It's a pair of Oakley flag jackets. All right, it's not very big. Mountain Dew can. Okay, what else do I got close by here? Here we go. Nope, I didn't bring my wallet out here. Okay, pistol bag. All right, this is not 
much taller than a Glock 17 mag, and it is no, it's, it's about half as thick. All right, so you can carry these very, very easily. And one thing that I just saw and thought about, like I could put it in a tourniquet pouch, a nylon tourniquet pouch meant for a cat tourniquet with the tourniquet still in there. All right, does it come out of there easily? Not really, because it's kind of tight. But just showing you, these things are small for the amount of blade they are. So other pros, in some places they might be legal. They're not in mine. So this one can't be carried. But this is here for academic practice, right? What is the other con? Well, you really can't miss the ability to open it, right? You just put your finger on that big piece of steel and knock it backwards, all right? It's a whole lot easier to hit than a thumb stud just because of sake of size, but it's a, a lot harder to work with than a thumb hole, okay? But, I mean, with practice, you can actually open it up pretty quick. But, as you just saw, con, it takes a lot of practice. And like I said, because I don't carry this, this isn't something I, do. I sit around doing all the time. There you go. All right. So, another one, it's ambidextrous, right? Completely ambidextrous. There's no thumb studs or anything to worry about being on the wrong side. There's no... There's no pocket clips. So notice there's a con. You have to give this thing a lot of respect. See how I moved out of the way when I dropped it, right? There's nothing on here. There's no nail mix, nothing. If you want to open it traditionally, right? That's cool, all right? Because those ridges are on both sides of the blade. So you can do that as well if you need to. All right, what else is a pro of it? Well, you've got a nifty pressure point activation tool right there on that tail. You drive that into a point, Right now, I understand you're using a lethal weapon to do that. So, I mean, but you drive that tail into a point and that can get them to back off you enough to, oh, now we just up the game up a little bit, right? Uh, what else do you have? It makes a dandy fist load because I've got pretty big hands and it is long, which is also a con, but I can actually use it like a Kubaton, just the same. So, what else do you have going for you with it? These things are the definition of razor sharp if you know what you're doing, if you know how to keep them sharp, okay? So yeah, I, they get extremely sharp. You are not gonna have an issue as long as you maintain these blades the way you should with my knife wasn't sharp enough to, to cut through that. Uh, they, they will, as long as it's something that can be sliced and doesn't need to be chopped, right? Uh, they are absolutely every bit as capable of cutting as any modern blade. They're just, they just don't have a point, which is a con. Now, cons. They are illegal in a lot of places, like mine. I'm, I'm in my shop on my property, so I can pretty much carry what I want right now. But once I hit, leave the property line, this would be a ticket to the Moore County Hilton, okay? So what else is a con? Well, there's no back spacing. So there's nothing to hold this open. So you can squeeze on it too tight for it to open, which also works out well because you can squeeze on it tight enough to make it harder for it to close, all right? So... And then there's that tail again, preventing a con, posing a con. You have to make sure you're gripping low enough on the grips, on the grip panels, so that that clears what you're opening, right? Because if it doesn't clear, I'm gonna choke up a little bit, you're gonna get this. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if you end up here and your thumb slips, you're gonna need, you're gonna need stitches, okay? So you wanna make sure you get that all the way clear. Uh, probably the biggest con from a, a knife perspective, it doesn't have a locking mechanism, all right? It's just kind of free there. So you have to lock it with parts of your body, all right? So eh, it's not the best best way to go. We, we've we evolved. But understand, in a pinch, you can do that. It just requires a lot of training, which is another con. Everything about this straight razor requires immense amounts of time and effort put into what you're doing. The biggest one being sharpening. These things have that really, really thin edge, so they get insanely sharp. But they got a really thin edge, so it rolls and needs to be maintained a lot more often than other blades. Like take, for example, my modern fighting blade, the Spyderco Waved Endura. All right, notice the similarity. All right. Could I draw this and push back on a pocket to start popping it open? Yeah, I absolutely could if I was carrying it in the front pocket. All right, but this is the big one, the lock and the thumb hole. 
So let's see here, and I'm gonna use this right-handed because I'm better with the right hand on this. All right, and I actually got that to open pretty quick. Start to finish, start, finish. Now let's look at the thumb hole. Start to finish, start. Ah, I boogered it. Let's try it one more time. Start, fit. oh, much faster. Now let's look at cutting edges. All right, first off you see this Spyderco is considerably shorter, about the same thickness. And if I didn't have the wave on it, it wouldn't be that much wider. So smaller blade. But that thumb hole for speed and that waved, wave shaped opening feature for use as a quillion to open it up goes a long way. All right. Now let's look at where the differences start. You notice you've got this Ricasso back here, this flat part for handling the blade. Well, now all of a sudden it doesn't look so long, does it? All right, and if I actually put that where the cutting edge starts, right about there. So I've got another three quarters of an inch to an inch with the Spyderco of usable cutting edge, but I'm pretty sure you can see the most obvious advantage to the Spyderco. I have a point so I can actually thrust with it. Now, here's another one that a lot of modern fighting folders have that a straight razor won't. Pocket clip. So I can carry this in a consistent position every time. It's not rolling around in my pocket. It's not floating around. Here's another thing a lot of people don't think about. This is more likely to be legal. It is legal in my state. This is not. So, um, is that to say you shouldn't carry a straight razor? Well, I don't know. I don't know the legalities in your area. I am saying this is going to be a whole lot less likely to get you a trip to jail in my area than the straight razor, but it's nowhere near as cool. All right. Should you know how to fight with a straight razor? Absolutely. But then again, I'm a martial arts nerd. I believe you should be able to fight with anything. I believe you should be able to beat somebody half to death with this fucking Mountain Dew can. So everything's a weapon if you hold it right. Now, why should you be familiar with using this? Because you might travel to a place where this is common. You might travel to a place where this is legal and this is not, all right? Uh, if you put this in your hygiene bag that goes in your checked baggage, you are more likely to get this into a foreign country under that context than you would if you had this in your checked baggage, all right? So there, there's more to it than just at home, right? So should you know how to fight with one? Yes. Should you carry one today? No, probably not. And, and the biggest thing is maintaining it, right? These things have to be stone sharpened. It takes a while. They are astronomically picky about the angle that they are sharpened on. And then they have to be stropped. And if you do any of that improperly, this thing will have about the same effectiveness as a butter knife. All right. So, with, but there again, this was like, I think 80 bucks when I bought it. This was like 12 so, I mean, if you're really that tight for money, I mean, a straight razor, utility knife, something like that, that you can get for a few bucks today beats the one you have to wait till you get paid on Friday for, all right, or whenever you get paid. So, just kind of a little interesting historical exercise here. When when we look at, like, uh, obviously, I'm kind of into cowboy shit, for those of y'all that don't know me, so... I watched too many Western movies growing up, right? When you look at the old gunfighters of the past, if they carried a knife for fighting, it was a fixed blade, right? Like a Bowie, an Arkansas toothpick, something of that nature. But when they carried something in their pocket, remember, good pocket knives aren't as new or as old as people think, rather. All right. Did they exist? Yeah, but these were a hell of a lot easier to get at the time, okay? So when you start looking at your gamblers where, you know, your five and a half, seven and a half, four and three quarter inch uh, Colt single actions, uh, your three and a half, five and seven inch Schofields, your, I think, five and a half and uh, seven and a half Remington 75s. All right. Those aren't going to be as common as like your Remington Derringers, your small bulldog type revolvers and these because they're easily concealed. All right. Uh, it is actually entirely possible to use Velcro one wrap and carry one of these on, uh, on your leg. All right. On your ankle. Uh, straight razors were 
quite a popular weapon in the 1800s. So uh, if, if it was popular then, I mean, it's definitely something that could be used to that effect today. Uh, does that mean it's going to be as effective as a modern option? No, it doesn't. I like the Colt single action, especially the Smith & Wesson Schofield as well. But if we're going to talk about the ballistics of the Smith & Wesson Schofield cartridge, uh, does that mean that I would carry a Smith & Wesson Schofield over something like, say, uh, 1911 and 45 ACP? Very similar ballistics there? No, it doesn't. Um, you know, just because, like, if I could find some modern speed loaders for a Schofield, I think that would be awesome. Right, yeah, top break, cling, shells go everywhere, new speed loader, cling, and go back to it. But um, that's never going to be as fast as hit the button, new mag in, slide block. All right, it's not going to be anywhere near as fast. Now, that being said, um, straight razors were still common during the 1911's heyday. They were a mafia weapon, right, um, along with everybody else under the sun. So, because that was really until the Gillette double-edged safety razor, that was the only way a man could shave his face. And uh, obviously, uh, women attending to their grooming desires as well. Straight razor. It was a straight razor or nothing until the Gillette uh, double-edged safety razor, really. Uh, there were other options, of course. But those that really, for shaving, it was this until the, the Gillette came about, which I do have a Gillette double-edged safety razor. Um, I've shaved the sides of my head with it before. I usually look like I got out of a knife fight when I do that. But um, nonetheless, right? Uh, that was an option that people had. So they learned how to fight with it and it's small. It's easy to hide. And obviously for later uses, this thing cuts way above its weight class because I mean, it's a literal razor. What do you expect? So definitely one to keep in mind. Uh, they were popular with people that cut people up for a reason. So that doesn't mean that a good person of today can't cut up a bad person trying to cut them up just the same. All right, and you also have to think they were made illegal for a reason. They work. When a weapon is made illegal, it's usually because that's a clue that that is a damned effective weapon. All right. Um, now, with using it as a damned effect, is this standard grip edge out going to be as effective as this standard grip edge out? No, it's not. Will this cut deeper than this? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, you will not change my mind about that. So it depends on what you're wanting to do, all right? Uh, I actually know uh, people that keep these on hand for cutting ropes, like thin ropes, like cords. Um, yeah, it's not uncommon for these to be found in a pure cutting roll, all right, still to this day. And obviously, barbers, hairstylists, all that. So... This is an interesting historical piece. And uh, if you learn how to fight with a straight razor and you fancy yourself a gunfighter, you can carry yourself into that mindset of using an old school gunfighter weapon without having to buy a single action revolver. So uh, definitely one to look at. Definitely interesting historical thought. And uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this and Patreon. We'll catch y'all next week. YouTube, y'all are seeing this a month late. Join my Patreon. Join my Patreon. The link will be down there in the description along with all my other social media. Feel free to follow me on any of it. And uh, again, I, I can't thank those who subscribe to my Patreon enough. Y'all y'all are great people and keep doing what you're doing. Here's to all y'all. Stay safe. And uh, if you get in the fight, stay in it.